Good job. Thank you. Good morning. There's a great quote by Ram Das, and he says, we're all just walking each other home. So for the next 18 minutes or so, I'm going to imagine that we're all holding hands, and let's take a walk together. Over the past several months of my life, I've been painting an abstract self-portrait. This has been a journey of me discovering a medium in painting and then sharing that with the world. This is an experience of a girl discovering herself. And in that process, I've been discovering what I think about this thing we call life. So since the beginning of time, people have questioned, who am I? Am I my thoughts in my head? Am I my ego? Am I my job? I practiced law in New York for 12 years. And after the birth of my son, a few years after that, I stopped practicing law and I literally sat on my couch and I asked, who am I if I'm not a New York high-powered lawyer? That's how wrapped up in my identity my job was. And I think that a lifelong quest to answer those questions resulted in the wild events of the last several months of my life. I have two children, a 10-year-old boy and a 5-year-old girl, and they love to paint, they love to make art, they like to have little art shows, and I buy them supplies. One day they were off to school and I said to myself, I think I'm gonna make a painting, why not? So I sat down at my kitchen by myself and I made this peace symbol heart. And it's a pretty good match for my self-description. Whenever people ask me, you know, what am I like, I say I'm a neurotic hippie. I love peace and I love love, but I'm gonna think about it and I'm gonna analyze it a lot. Well, I made this painting and I looked at it and I thought, well, it's cute. But, you know, frankly, it looks like something a 10-year-old girl would make. So I thought I'm not very good at this, but it sure was fun. But the next day, I just kept thinking about the way that the paintbrush felt against the canvas and the airy way that painting made me feel. And I couldn't stop it. I had to make another one. Now another question we all ask is what else is out there? Are we alone? Is there other life in the universe? Are there other dimensions, other universes, an afterlife, a heaven? And if so, what might those things look like? My next painting, Alternate System, if I was designing a universe, this is what it would look like. It would be pink and purple with splashes of neon green. And I think that this painting for me was an expression that I wanted to start painting my life the way I wanted it to be. But if that's the case, then I had to ask myself, why was I not already painting my life the way I wanted it to be? I heard recently that there are really only two emotions, love and fear, and everything can be boiled down into those two emotions. So then I had to say to myself, well, what am I afraid of? And I'm afraid of change. I'm afraid of uncertainty. I'm afraid that if I try something, I won't be any good at it. And I'm afraid of what I might look like if other people don't like what I create. Well, a few nights after I made Alternate System, I felt an overwhelming compulsion to paint again. And I painted furiously for hours on my dining room floor. And the next morning when I stood my next painting up, I was painting on the floor at that time, and I looked at it. I see a girl in the middle of this painting, and she looks scared, and she's running away. And when I saw that, I immediately had a feeling that that girl was a spirit who had always run away from her destiny. And by showing up in this medium, by showing up in this painting, she wanted to stand and face her destiny. And for the first time, I thought to myself, maybe I'm a painter. Maybe I'm a painter. But what I didn't realize was that that girl was me, that it was time for me to stand and face my fears and face my destiny. Now there had been signs that I was a painter before, but I had ignored them. 
12 years ago, I was living in New York City, and I had just gone through a painful divorce. I had been married in the Catholic Church, and I fully believed that you get married once and you're, you're married for life, like my parents. I fully believed that. But my ex-husband had betrayed me and he left me. My marriage was shattered, and my faith, frankly, was shaken. The following year, I was still living in New York City, and I lived through 9-11. And like everyone else who experienced 9-11, I was in a state of shock. And in the wake of those two things, the personal tragedy of my divorce and the worldwide trauma of 9-11, I had three visions, clear visions, of paintings. I had someone help me do a rough sketch. The first painting was of an upside down cubic cross with two thin red lines on the cross. And there was a woman with a sort of plastic Salvador Dali melting face being pulled down by thousands of faceless people below. <clears throat> the second vision was of an old fashioned camera taking a picture of an old fashioned alarm clock and the hands of the alarm clock were naked women's bodies and one of them was pregnant. And there were lightning flashes. And the third vision was of a girl sitting in the yogic prayer position, looking down crestfallen with strife through her heart region, the globe, the world at her feet, and weapons in her hands. I told my childhood friend about these paintings and she said to me, maybe you're a painter. Maybe you're a painter. I said, no, of course not. It's crazy, I'm not a painter. Help me find someone who can paint these. Well, that was the first sign to me that living inside me was a thoughtful, intelligent artist who wanted to come out and who wanted to help me answer my questions. Who am I? In the wake of my divorce, has my faith and my religion turned upside down? Has my religion turned upside down on me? Is my biological clock ticking? Will I have children? How can I be a mother and a full-time lawyer working 80 hours a week? And most importantly, do these things define me? But I wasn't ready to meet my inner artist. I wasn't ready to follow the archetypal paths of all of the people who've come before me and ask these same questions about the stages of life and the stages that the earth goes through and the stage we all play our life out on. I wasn't, I wasn't ready to meet my inner artist. I fell in love again. I got remarried and I had the two most amazing children anyone could ever have. And I tried to find my spiritual footing. I read about Kabbalah, I read about Buddhism. We moved back to Florida, my hometown, and I tried Catholic light, I tried to be a Methodist. But I couldn't find what made sense to me. What I did find over the last two or two and a half years was a regular practice of yoga. Yoga is not a religion, but it is a way of life. And what I found through the breathing and the movements and the swirling of the chakras, which is what this painting is, it's the swirling of our chakras, was a path to the inside of me. And what I found inside of me, underneath time and all of my experiences and these relationships and my clothes and everything else that we put on top of ourselves and underneath my fear, I found love. And once I found the love inside of me, I realized that love opens the door to intuition. Fear closes it. And once I started practicing, tapping into the love inside of me, I started to create. I started to paint. And in February of this year, paintings started pouring out of me like a geyser I couldn't stop. I painted the cross from my first vision from 11 years ago. When I made this cross, I realized I was no longer in that place 
I was no longer in that stark, cold, lonely place. If you look at this cross and look at the other paintings I'm showing you, I had moved far along my journey. I started to see my guides. I was searching for something. When you're searching, the universe will give you guides and signs. Someone wrote to me and said they wanted to buy one of my paintings and I was floored, but immediately I saw this person as a guide giving me permission to be who I want to be, which is ultimately just who I am. I also started connecting to my spirit guides. Maybe that's my subconscious, maybe it's the hand of God, maybe it's actual spirits. But the point is I started seeing the signs and it kept moving me along my path. I went to one of my yoga classes, they're called flow level two classes. And at my yoga class, an awareness started to surface in me. And I came home and I painted this painting. I called it DNA flow level two. What I started to realize is that the building blocks of who I am are DNA. That at the microscopic level, everything flows. That like everything else, I am energy. That is who I am. I'm not my ego, I'm not the thoughts in my head, I'm certainly not my job. I'm energy. And I'm pulsating and I'm flowing in and through this body in what we call reality. Once I made that realization, I realized that the universe is our playground. It's what I call our nebulala. Once you start connecting to that inner child, that inner artist, the universe can be your nebulala. But the universe is ever changing. So then that makes me ask, if I'm part of the universe and I'm part of this energy that is the universe and the universe is ever changing, can I change myself? Can I transform this energy that is me? Can we all transform this energy that is us to something different? And if so, do we need some kind of alien geometry to do that? Do we need some big E energy machine in the sky to take that pink and purple massive energy and transform it into something else? Or do we have in the strands of our collective DNA the free will to transform ourselves? If we're just a computer program running with just the perception of choice, then it doesn't matter what we do. But if we have will and we can transform ourselves, then it does matter. I can tell you that the interaction I have with the paints and the canvases instructs my answer about this question that I've always had. Do we actually have free will? When I made this painting, it's called Aztec Mosaic, I heard over and over in my head the words, the paint will go where it wants to go, the paint will go where it wants to go. I didn't consciously make this painting. So I had to give my will over to something else. I don't know if that's spirits. I don't know if it's the hand of God. I don't know if it's just my subconscious. But what this painting and the next two I'm gonna show you showed me is that we do have will. We have a measure of will that ebbs and flows in relationship in some sort of mathematical formula with the will of the other energies that we interact with. When I'm interacting with the painting, part of it is me and part of it isn't me. Part of it is my will and part of it is the will of some other energies around me. When I made this painting, Ayahuasca Trance, which I think you can see is very different than some of the other paintings that I'm gonna show you. I did something, I tried an experiment. There are these South American cultures where they take these ayahuasca plants and shamans boil them and they play tribal music. People ingest the plant brew and then they report that they have these experiences with other dimensions and spirits. Well, I wanted to have that experience but I didn't want to ingest the plant because it has certain, it has certain uh, purgative properties that I did not want to experience. So I put on that tribal music and I listened to it over and over and over again for 12 hours and I made this painting. 
And it's the sort of psychedelic art that people make after these experiences and faces appear. I didn't try to make a face and I didn't try to make, you can see South America there in the middle with a heart going in or out. I didn't try to make anything. I just painted. And the point is that my will, the measure of will that I have was interacting with the will of the other energies that were brought into play in the making of this painting. With this painting, Tricameral Time Machine, this painting fought me. I did not want to make this painting. I intended this painting to be white and black with pink splatters. And the whole time I was making this, the canvas and the paint, no, that's not what's gonna happen. This is the painting that's coming out. I was mad at this painting. I didn't even like it at first because I was so mad at it. Now that, does, that may not make sense to you. I don't know, is this a, a part of myself I don't wish to consciously acknowledge? Or is it some other, the will of some other energies? That's what I think. Now, if you look at the nature of our reality, we have what I call intended individuality. We're meant to experience this life, this reality, as individuals encased in these bodies. But at the microscopic level, there's no difference between me and any of you or the rest of the world. We're all one. So, like a diptych painting, two panels that can stand alone but are really one painting, or like the U2 song says, we're one, we're all connected, but we're not the same. We're meant to experience this life as individuals. So what defines us as individuals? I'm a firm believer that what defines us as individuals are the choices that we make. We are the sum of the choices that we make. And once we make a choice, our body, our mind, and our soul exert our will. We exert our will through our energy to execute that choice. So your choices plus the execution of your will is you interacting in reality. Once you realize that, that we're all connected, but we're not the same, but we are all connected, you realize that whatever happens to anyone, really on some lab level, happens to all of us. Whatever happens to any of us really happens to all of us. And once you know that, once you know that inside yourself, it becomes absolutely key to act with compassion when making your choices and executing your will. When do we know, as a species, when it's time to transform, when it's time to evolve to a higher, more connected level of consciousness? When do we know when it's time to leave a toxic relationship? When do I, as an artist, know when it's time to stop painting? Time to put down the paintbrush and sign my name. That's something I really had to come to terms with because I had never had an art lesson I've never painted before, so I don't know. Well, this painting, Fatima, for me, represents the purgatory of a failed relationship. You're trapped there only by your own fear. You can leave any time. There's no, there's no windows on the cages, but you're holding yourself there. You can see there's people movers and there's a train waiting to take you on, on your journey, but you're holding yourself back there with your fear. We have to ask the same question as a species. If we look around, at our world, when is it time for us to let the sun set on worldviews that aren't working, where people are starving and they're disenfranchised, and people are controlled by governments that don't let them make choices and execute their will, then the worldview isn't working, and we need to, the sun needs to set on those, while at the same time, we raise the consciousness to a higher, more connected level based on choices made out of love and compassion. How do we do that? How do we move to the next level of consciousness? We need an energetic explosion to open up a portal to a new level of consciousness. And the way that we do that, the way that we get there, is by making choices out of love and not fear, 
putting that energy into the world, going from random collective consciousness to concerted collective consciousness, looking through our collective third eye to reach a new level of understanding. So what have I learned from my painting explosion over the past couple of months? I've learned a couple of things. I've learned that love is my religion. The act of painting, this painting, which is called Tara Mary Bodhisattva, answered my lifelong question about religion. In this painting, I see the profile of the Virgin Mary, I see a fetus, and I see a man in the fetal position, and I see the birth of humanity. When I meditated on this painting, I heard the words Tara and Tantra in my head. I didn't know this, but it turns out that Tara is the tantric meditation deity of Buddhism, the goddess of compassion. So what this means to me is that my conscious mind sees this painting through the prism of my Christian upbringing, but my subconscious mind sees it through the Buddhist philosophy. And I at once realized that I do not need to separate myself on the basis of religion. That I can walk with Jesus, I can seek enlightenment with Buddha, I can believe in a higher power by any name in the name of love and compassion. And to the contrary, to the extent that any religion is used in the name of repression or hate or exclusion, I can reject it. I'm so thankful to making this painting for answering that question for me. I feel at complete peace with that. I have also learned that love waves and love is free form. And what that means is that love is infinite. You don't have to guard it jealously or hold it close. You can always give it because you will never exhaust your supply. And the beauty of this reality is that we get to experience love. I've learned that I believe in freedom, but I believe in a freedom that flows beyond national boundaries. I think that the time has come to stop thinking in terms of nation states and to truly set and seek global goals and to think, to shift our paradigm, shift our thinking. Think in terms of being a human race. I've learned that I think we all need love training. The time has passed for anti-war demonstrations and anti-bullying campaigns, and what we need is aggressive love training, teaching each other how to love each other. And I have learned that we are all on a personal and a collective road to ahimsa. That's personal nonviolence, both physical nonviolence and violence of the mind. The violence in the mind that tells you I'm not good at this or I can't do that. We need to eliminate it. We need to do it both on the individual level and on the level of mankind, and that starts in the individual, making choices based out of love and putting that out there. Remember, we are the ones who make the rules in this life. So to get where, to get where I'm talking about, what we need to do, we need to combine and balance our right brain and our left brain, our neurotic and our hippie, our yin and our yang, our masculine and our feminine aspects, our Eastern philosophies and our Western technologies, our science and our religion, to raise us to a concerted collective consciousness. Science and religion are not in conflict. They're just two aspects of the same thing, trying to answer the same question. Who are we? Where did we come from? And where are we going? The reason we need to do these things is because in August of this year, scientists found sugar in space. Sugar molecules, some of the basic building blocks of life. It's only a matter of time before we know for certain that we are not alone in this universe. And before we get to that level, we have to master this one. Two and a half weeks ago, my husband of almost 11 years unexpectedly left me. My heart is shattered into millions of pieces. And as I look around, I know that I'm never 
going to be able to pick up this many pieces. And all that I know to do is to stay steady on my road to ahimsa, to personal nonviolence. I sit in the yogic prayer position. I am the girl in my vision, my third vision from 11 years ago. I'm crestfallen, I'm looking down, there is so much strife in my heart region. But the world is at my feet and I have weapons in my hands that I now know are paintbrushes. And I softly hear the word mosaic in my head and I know that I'm gonna fill in the spaces and there'll be a new picture for me to paint. Because at the end of the day, at the end of all of my days, before I close my eyes for the very last time, I want to be peaceful in the knowledge that I chose my love, my life. I chose my life, not out of fear. This is the life I made out of love. The light within me honors the light within you, and I am so thankful to you for taking this walk with me. Namaste.